Hi, welcome to Hit the Mark and Happy New Year! Oh my goodness, I don't know if I was ready for that, but <laughs> yes, we are about to celebrate Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. And uh, it's really the first time um, for our church, Save the Nations, mm -hmm. that we're actually going to have, I mean, we've taught about Rosh Hashanah, right. but there's a big difference between teaching and actually doing it, walking it out. Right. And so um, on Sunday evening, we're going to have a house church Rosh Hashanah celebration. And Rosh Hashanah um, simply means the head of the year. All right. Um, so it is the um, beginning of the physical new year calendar, God's calendar. It's the beginning mm -hmm. of that. It's the seventh month called, month called Tishrei. And it starts on the first day of the month. But we wanted to ask this question and maybe you might be thinking about this because there's a lot of things going on today where people are are, are hearing about well Christians celebrating Passover right. or different things like that we're, we're, we're rediscovering our Hebraic roots yes and so we wanted to like say well should Christians be celebrating Rosh Hashanah yeah. is it something for Christians to even be doing because we need to know that we need to know what does the Bible teach right because we can't come up with our own answers we need to find out what do the scriptures say about the Hebraic feast or the the feast of Rosh Hashanah right. so I was gonna let you just read the first time it's mentioned it's in Leviticus Leviticus 23 23 through 25 then the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel saying in the seventh month on the first day of the month you shall have a Sabbath rest a memorial of blowing of trumpets a shofar show them the shofar yeah, honey. blowing the ram's horn the shofar a holy convocation you shall do no customary work on it and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord okay so we're going to look at this and say, like, should believers in Jesus be celebrating this? Now, we've been teaching for a while that we are not separate, but connected to Israel. Yes. We've been talking about that we are Hebrew Christians, but a lot of people might not even understand what that means. But I want to just give you a, a few of the reasons why I believe Hebrew Christians who understand who they are, they don't have to, but they get to yes, celebrate yes. this appointed time. So when, when the feast was given, when you read it in Leviticus 23, there was a mixed multitude of people right. who came out of Egypt. There were the Hebrews who were born Hebrews from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But there were also people who, who became Hebrews. They said, you know, we want to follow the God of the Hebrews. We want right. to worship Yahweh. Right. We don't want to stay in Egypt. Right. And they came out and they stood at, at the mountain. And then Moses gave them the Torah law and he gave it to all of them. And he said, these are your appointed feasts. And this is what he said, which I think is so interesting. Um, in Leviticus 23, verse 2, it says this. Read that part. Speak to the children of Israel and tell them the set feast of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocations. Even these are my set feasts. And so if we go back to God's original tent, intent, what was it? These are not. Israel's feasts. No. These were not Hebrew feasts. These were the feasts of Yahweh, the yes, feasts of the yes. Lord. So I try to like liken it to something like um, birthdays, right? Anniversaries, right? Um, special days that mark a significant event in your life. Well, also most people live by calendars. They live by monthly, count, yearly, monthly, and even daily. And sometimes minute by minute. Minute by minute, they <laughs> live by a calendar. True. But yet we don't ever remember God's calendar, and God set His calendar in the Word of God. So as Hebrew Christians, we need to put. His dates and our calendars. It's true. Like, and you know, you have people in your life that you love and you care about. And you make sure, I know I do, I have these reminders in my phone. Yeah. And I set it up just like that. For every year, our anniversary, September yeah. 10th, which yeah. happens to fall on Rosh Hashanah yes, this year, yes. which is a blessing. So we need to put that in our calendar because they, these are God's appointed days that He says, I want to be with you. Yes. And so we have to also say, Lord, if you want to be with me, I want to be with you. Yes, amen. And uh, that's my heart. So when was when were these uh, appointments first set? A lot of people don't realize that God gave the Moedim his divine appointments, his seasons, his calendars. Calendar. He gave it 
back in the book of Genesis, the very first chapter, and oh, yes. verse 14, and it's before man was even created. And it wasn't given just to, um, uh, you know, there was no Hebrews. Right. There were no Jews. Right. It was just Adam. You know, it was before Adam. So look what it says. Genesis 1, 14, Then God said, Let there be lights in the sky to separate the day from the night. They will be signs, or in that, the word, when you look up that word, it means moedim, and will make religious festivals days and years. Yeah. Wow. So they'll, they'll mark the festival. They'll mark the religious times. And so God set these appointments before man even arrived. Mm. And God, you know, that's God's mercy. God, I love this thing of this about God, is God... When we need to know the specifics, right. he puts it there. Right. And then when we don't need to, need to know necessarily the specifics, he says, now listen to my voice. Right. Listen to my Holy Spirit, and I'll lead and guide you into the specifics. But when the, God puts something in his word and it's a specific, he wants us by faith yes, by to faith. obey it, to keep it. So some of the reasons why I think Christians should, should celebrate Rosh Hashanah is, number one, they're not... Um, Israel's feasts, they're not Hebrew feasts, they're God's feasts, right. and he put them in the earth before any man arrived. Right. And so that's part of that. So what is Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is the, what the rabbis would say, it's the physical birthday of the world. So Adam, if you will, he awoke, and he saw God for the first time, and he said, you're my king. Yes. And that's one of the idioms for Rosh Hashanah is the day of the king, the cor it's coronation day. So oh, wow. Adam awoke and he recognized, God, you're my creator, you're my king. And, and, and so he began to understand that God wanted to have a relationship with him. Mm. And then also it marks the beginning, what we we're talking about, it marks the, the beginning of the physical year. So Passover, if you will, uh, God made Passover the first month because Passover is, a, is the crossing over from out of Egypt. He made it the, the, the beginning of the spiritual year. Right. So just like you have a spiritual birthday, do you right. remember? Yes, I don't know if you even remember again. when yes, you were born I again. <laughs> um, I remember when I was 15, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. That's my spiritual birthday. And but just like you might have a you have a natural birthday, I was born in October naturally, but my spiritual birthday is a different time. Right. So Rosh Hashanah marks the physical creation. So right. it's when we physically say, you know, for, for believers in Jesus, we understand that we need to be on God's calendar. We need to say uh, Tishrei 1, the, which is the blowing of the trumpets, Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah. Yes. This is our Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You know? I can't blow that so far, but I can blow this one. Happy New Year. <laughs> so it's also known as the last trump. And the trumpet would sound actually for 30 days, and this would be the 30th day. Mm. And on the 30th day would be the first of Tishrei, and it would be called Rosh Hashanah, or the blowing of the trumpets. And when the trumpet was sounded, it was calling God's people to gather. Mm. It was calling them to draw near to Him. It's actually calling them to awake. Yes, yes. And what is God saying to us? It's time to awake yes, to the Holy Spirit. It's yes. time to awake to the things that God wants to do in your life. Many people have been, they've been lulled to asleep, to sleep and they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. The world lulled them to sleep. So God says, don't worry, I got something on my calendar. If my people start to fall asleep, the trumpet's going to blow. Yeah, I can't blow it right now. <laughs> but the trumpet's going to blow and I'm going to awaken you to my purposes. Well, also, it's, yes, awaken to remind to us remind that us. our... That God is our king. That Jesus paid an awesome price. He died on the cross and rose from the dead. And you know, he is our king. So it reminds us to remember. To remember him. Him. He wants us to arise and wake up. Wake up. There's prophetic things. in. There's three trumpet calls. Okay. The first trumpet's on Pentecost when God says, I want to marry you, and he betrothes to us. Then you have the last trump, which is on Rosh Hashanah, where God says, I want to take you to be with me. I want to catch away my bride. Yeah. This, this, it's, it's, it's prophetic, if you will. Rosh Hashanah is actually prophetic of the what we call the rapture or yeah. the catching away of the church. Because and, the Bible said the trumpet of the Lord is going to sound. And it's actually, we, you know, and I'm just beginning to really understand all these things. Because I'm on a journey like you. you. I'm studying my Hebrew roots and, and finding out the meanings of the, the words. And I, and I found out that when, when uh, the apostle says at the last trump, 
the dead in Christ shall rise. The people reading that who knew the Torah, mm. they knew right away he's talking about Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. So Rosh Hashanah is in the New Testament. Right. The only problem is we read it without those lens. And we don't understand that the last trump is Rosh Hashanah. Right. So it doesn't mean we're going to know. And there's so many cool things about Rosh Hashanah. Because Rosh Hashanah is also called the hidden day. It's it's a day you don't know when it starts. Because it's based on the, the new moon. Right. And by the time they could spot the new moon, it had already started. So they really didn't know exactly. And, and you'll find out that it, the Jews actually celebrate for two days or one long day. Because they don't want to miss any of it. Right. right. So, um, so it, it's a time that God's blowing the trumpet. He's saying, come and be with me come be near me uh, I want to take you to a new level a new height right. um, and so it begins on the first day of the seventh month and um, and so at, at the signing of that crescent moon they had to see the moon to know when Rosh Hashanah started and just think about the moon the moon reflects the light of the Sun mm -hmm. in the same way and the and the moon revolves around the Sun we also reflect reflect the light of the sun yes the yes. sun of god just like the moon so um it's also known as the feast of the opening of gates so another reason why i really think that christians should keep the feast of of, of rosh Hashanah and not as legalism i don't right. i want people to understand we're not saying if you don't keep rosh Hashanah, you're going to hell no not at all for 30 some years, I didn't understand this. And right. I grew up in the church. I, I was born Jewish, but I didn't even understand what Rosh Hashanah was about. I celebrated as a boy but I, right. and as a head of the year, but I didn't know all this, the mysteries of it, the spiritual implications. Right. So, But one of the things I found out that in Isaiah 66 is that all flesh after the, um, the new heaven and new earth is created. So this is after the millennium. Right. We have a after scripture Jesus is after Jesus has come. Cash away his bride. After he comes and puts his feet on the Mount of Olives, after he reigns for a thousand years, God says in his word that we're still going to be keeping these appointed days. Yeah, let's read And that read will blow that. your mind. So if there's, any, if there's any doubt after reading this scripture, should you do it? Yeah. You, you won't have a doubt. Well, if we're going to be doing it in the millennium. Why and after the millennium. After the millennium. And even after... And, and how and we're not doing it now how are we going to know how to do it so i believe the holy yes. spirit yes. he if you're watching today yep. you're not, not watching by accident, by accident. the holy spirit is drawing you cuz he wants you to learn about the moedim he wants you to learn about his calendar he wants you to learn about his timeline because he wants you to start practicing remember a hebrew christian is not just head knowledge it's actually living and doing and practicing. Yes. He wants you to practice now. So you'll be ready in the millennium. Let's read this. Isaiah 66, 22 through 23. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. This scripture, I didn't even know it was in the Bible. Right. And I read the Bible all the time. And to see that all flesh, it's not even just the Hebrew Christians. It's not even just the believers. God says there'll coming a day after the millennium that everyone who is a person, every everyone. bit of flesh is going to worship when? On the new moons, yes. Rosh Hashanah starts the new year on the new moon, right? Yes, yes. And all of God's modim are actually set by the moon. That's how we know the yes. days, by the moon. And they're not just going to keep the modim because in Leviticus 23, the first modim actually listed is the Sabbath. Mm, we don't right. call it the Moedim, but before he goes into the seven feasts of the Lord, he talks about the, the Sabbath, Sabbath first. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be keeping it, like you said, after Jesus comes. So church, why aren't we doing it now? Right. Well, the thing is, we are. We are. And we just started doing it. And we are going to just pray about it. If the Lord is knocking on your heart and saying, you know what? Yeah. Wow. He's aligning me with his, his calendar. I didn't even know it. Right. And just by faith say, you know what? I'm going to start walking and celebrating the feast of the, the Lord. Lord. Yes. Because I want to be in tune. I want to be in sync with God's calendar. I want to be awakened. Yes. yes. I want to be, uh, you know, the Bible talks about. He who has ears, let him what? Hear. Hear. 
One of the scriptures in Psalms says, blessed are those who know the Yom Teruah. Blessed are those who know mm -hmm. the sound of the shofar, who hear God knocking, knocking, knocking right? Yes. But, but what's the Bible saying in Revelation? I stand at what? The, the door, door and, and I knock. knock. Yes. But you got to what? You open. gotta open the door. Yes, yes. So these, and it's a party, you know. Oh my I goodness. think we don't realize it. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. So why wouldn't you want to do it? God is saying, "Come, I'm gonna awaken you. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate together." So we understand that when we start keeping the feast of the Lord, there is a blessing. Oh my goodness. A blessing that comes. And you and I have experienced this. When we started on this journey, I want you to know that we did it totally by faith. I felt like Abraham. Yeah. I was going, I was walking, walking by faith, not really knowing. knowing what was going to happen. But I can tell you this, that I could feel the presence of the Lord come to both of us. And then after that, the blessing came. And I know there's a blessing yeah. in this. You can feel the wind of the spirit behind yeah. these things because God put it in his book. Yes. And then he also has it in our book, but we don't know it. Right. So when we, we, a lot of people say, I don't know my purpose. I don't know what God, what, what am I supposed to be doing right now? What are my assignments? Who am I supposed to be connected to? Where am I right. supposed to live? All these things come as you connect to God's timeline and calendar. Right. And even the, the rabbis and Hebrews believe that during this time is a time that God opens the books. Oh, he opens hallelujah. books so we can actually peek into them, if you will, and see what God has for us. Yes. So this is, mm. now I'll give you some other reasons why I believe, scripturally, we need to be keeping and celebrating Rosh Hashanah. Um, remember, the early church... When they started out, Jesus had ascended. They had the day of Pentecost. They kept Pentecost. We know that. The Holy Spirit came. But for um, the, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Mm -hmm. So for almost 40 years, um, they were going back to the temple right. in Jerusalem. And what were they doing? They were keeping the mm -hmm. Moedim. Now think about this. The only scriptures that they had at that time was what we call the Old Testament or what the Hebrews called the Tanakh. Right. The Torah, the writings, and the prophets. And so, and then here's the thing. Nowhere can you find in your Bible where God told anyone to stop doing these feasts. No, he never would because he made, he set, he started it in Genesis. He continued with Israel explaining to them about the Moedim. So his, he would never change. Why would he change it? We know Jesus kept these feasts. Yes. And we, we really understand it. The spring feasts, Jesus died on Passover. Right. He's buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, on the Feast of First Fruits. On the third day, he rises from the dead, right? And then on Pentecost, he gives the Holy Spirit. They were symbolic of his first coming. These feasts in the fall, they're going to be symbolic of his second coming. The catching way of the bride, the judgment of the saints, um, his second coming where he puts his feet on the Mount of Olives, and his millennial reign. Mm. So all these things are prophetic. The book of Colossians, Paul says, these are shadows of the future. Yes. So we need to understand. If we don't understand the shadows, we're not going to understand the reality. Right, right. So, um, so they kept, what I'm saying is we know Jesus kept the feast. We know the disciples kept the feast. We know the apostle Paul keeps the feast and commands Timothy. He yes. says, Timothy, now everything that I'm doing in all the churches, make sure they're doing it too. Right, right. So we have written record. And look, at, you can read in 1 Corinthians yes. 4. 1 Corinthians 4, 17. For, for this very cause I sent to you, Timothy, who is my beloved and trustworthy child in the Lord, who will recall to your minds my methods of proceeding and course of conduct and way of life in Christ, such as I teach everywhere in each of the churches. You know, and I brought this out, you know, at our house church when we talk, is if you can find reference to these feasts in one of the letters, then you understand that the Apostle Paul said, make sure they all get it. Right. And so we do have references to these feasts in Ephesians, in Corinthians, in Titus, mm -hmm. um, in Colossians. So if we have that record, we have to understand that it was for all the churches. And who was in the churches? 
those born yeah, born um, <laughs> Hebrews right those who um, were grafted in yes. from the and then those from the nations right so we understand that the same mixed multitude, mixed multitude that came out of Egypt is the same mixed multitude that's in the church right now yes you get to be a part of Israel. You right. get, so the thing is, now we just have to understand by faith, how do we begin to do this? Because right. it's a journey it's, and yes. you gotta do it by faith. And God's not gonna condemn you if you make a mistake or if you do it wrong. Right. You know, the, the truth is, we're all probably gonna do it wrong right. sometimes. Well, it, it talks about how God looks at our hearts. Yeah. And if our heart is drawing near, he said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. When we obey him and draw near and honoring his feast day, he automatically will draw near to us. That's so true. And, and so as you know, we want to bring this to a close. We want you to understand that God blows, he wants, he blows his trumpet yeah. to waken us to warn us yes. and to get us to say, listen, it's you still have time to realign yourself, right. get in alignment, get in agreement with my word, with my purposes, with my plan for your life and, and keep these feasts and don't, you know, start your new year in alignment. Right. Or make your new year's resolution now, right now. Yeah. This is what God says is the new year. So what do you want to change in your life? What do you want to tweak? Mm -hmm. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? What, how is he drawing you? You need to decide right now, this is how I'm going to live this new year. And God will help you. If you ask him, if you call on him and say, Lord, I need your help in this area. He will help you. It's so true. I want you to read this last scripture yeah. about the rapture and understand that the rapture, um, all the catch, the word rapture is not in the Bible, but the right. word catching away is. Right. It's actually a marital term. Remember Benjamin when they they couldn't, um, their, their tribe was basically almost destroyed and they didn't have a wife. They couldn't, so they had to catch a wife, the Bible yes. said, yearly. Yes. And so God is coming to catch away his bride, but you know, we got to be like the five wise virgins right. who had oil in their lamp yes right and we have to be ready god wants us to be ready he's coming back he's coming we back. have to start living like it that's the blessed hope we got to start living like he's coming back we can't right. be living you know so many people they're just caught up in the thorns of the world they're caught up and and the, the world the systems the world. Yes. has put church people god's people put us to sleep Right. You don't understand why you're here. Your purpose is to be a light. Yes, yes. Your purpose is to shine for Jesus. The Bible says, don't hide your light. No, you have so to we shine. can't let, um, some people are actually letting despondency and discouragement mm -hmm. um, hide their light. Right. And, and so God says, it's time to shine. Yeah. Arise, shine, for the light has come. It's time for Christ. Um, he says, awake, O sleeper, awake. and let Christ shine on you. You know, yes, yes. Isaiah 55 says, arise. Yes. So God's saying, it's time for us to awake. He's blowing the trumpet for us. Yes. And um, we don't know the exact day or hour. Right. A lot of people don't realize this, but when Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, he was actually quoting the idiom that all Hebrew people said about Rosh Hashanah. Before Rosh Hashanah came, they would say, no man knows the day or hour. Oh, that's, that's what they would so say. Wonderful. So when Jesus was saying, no man knows the day or hour, and he's talking about his, he's talking about the catching away, he, he's referring, he knows the Moedim. He wrote the Moedim, right, right? right? So he's talking about Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. And so, oh, it's so amazing. So, and so he, yes, if anyone tells you they know the day or the hour that Jesus is coming, turn it off, don't right, read it. Right. But you will know the season. You will know the season. Yes. And you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear, hear the sound. You'll hear the sound. You know, in I your keep heart. thinking about when the shofar, the sound, and I keep thinking about Elijah when he was praying for rain. And the Bible said he heard the sound mm -hmm. of the abundance of rain. Yeah. What did he hear? Yeah. He heard, heard the, the shofar. The shofar and I'm course. telling yeah. you people, you're hearing yeah. the sound right now. There's a sound, and it's a sound of miracles. Yeah. We're entering into the time of miracles. We're entering into the time of a great harvest of souls. And you know what? We're going to be like the early church. 
We're going to see the miracles. We're going to see those who are oppressed and depressed, set free from the power of the enemy. I'm telling you, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Can you hear it? Can you amen, hear amen, it? Amen. Reach out today and yes. grab it. Let's pray. You, let's let's pray. pray. We even, yeah, we don't even have to okay, read that. We'll, we'll read, read it, it next, next week. week. Yeah. But let's just pray for the people. The oh, Holy Spirit is here right now. Yes. He wants to touch you. He wants to connect you to his will, to his purpose, to the book he has written for you. It's open. He wants you to see it. Yes. And he wants you to walk in it. But by faith, he wants you to say, I'm going to start celebrating the yes. redeem yes. of the Lord. Yes. Pray, baby. Pray for Father, I pray thank for you right now for this, this wonderful, sound. wonderful, wonderful sound yes. that we are hearing on the inside of us, Lord. We are hearing it. Yes. And we yes. know, God, that you are drawing near. And right now we draw near, near to, to you. you. And we respond and we say, Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. Father, if there's anybody watching today and they've never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the sound that you're hearing is that Jesus is Messiah. He is King. And all you have to do is say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. I make you the Lord of my life right now. Holy Spirit, come in. Resonate that yes. sound on the inside Hallelujah. of me that I always Hallelujah. hear the voice of my master when he comes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're like the five foolish right now that you, you hear the sound, but you know you don't have oil in your lamp. You know you're not ready. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, yes. I repent. Forgive me of all my sins right now. And, and, and can reconnect me right now with, the, with my master. Fill me up with the oil right now the oil of the yes. Holy Spirit and let me awaken to yes. what God is calling yes. me to right now yes. Yes. in Jesus yes. name. It's time to awaken and say, God, you are my King. Yes. You need to see him. You need to worship him. He wants yes. to call you to worship the yes. King. Yes. Worship, Pilate, the, worship King. the King of Kings. Yes. And be ready to meet him yes. in Jesus it's mighty name. name. Amen. 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 Well, we hope you receive that, that yeah. teaching on, we're going to be uh, doing some more. So uh, keep in tune, hit the mark. We also have a, yeah. what we're calling a Hebrew Christian calendar. We want to get, yes. send it to you. Um, if you give an offering of any amount, right. or you just write us or email us and say, hey, I want that calendar. We're going to send it to yes. you. Um, uh, you know what I was studying and it's interesting. You know, one of the things that Rosh Hashanah we do is to give an offering. Right. And listen, you don't have to give it to save, to save the nations or yeah. to us. But during you have a time, church, yes. write it on your envelope. Rosh Hashanah. Give a special offering. Yes. Because the root word of offering means to draw near. Oh, hallelujah. It's so powerful. And so uh, just by faith, say, I don't, and you know, the Lord, he already spoke to me. It's like, I yeah. already, I haven't talked to you about it. But yeah. there's, there's an offering that I want to give to the Lord Praise on God. Rosh Hashanah. And then 10 days later, we're going to celebrate Day of Atonement. We're gonna, I'm going to give an offering because right. there's an offering there. And then the first fruit offering is on Tabernacles. Right. So all three fall in this month. It's going to be an exciting time. Yeah. We hope you receive that today. And uh, until next time, yes. don't forget, hit, hit the, the mark. mark.